Kia ora everyone. Um, I'm feeling a little self-conscious. Uh, one of our advisors came into the office this morning and said, oh, did you remember to have a shave this morning? And of course, it's actually Movember. I'm, I don't know if you could even see it, but <laughs> I, I can feel it. I know it's there. You know? I, was, I was joking yesterday with, with some of you that at the last election, our, um, our, our conservation package had a mere eight key priorities that were of the utmost urgency. And I guess that reflects the centrality of conservation to the Green Party's mission um, and, uh, and to our, our love of this country and our natural environment. This election, we're, we're focusing on three broad but incredibly important uh, themes in the conservation area. And again, we're, we're approaching these themes as we are with all of our policy at this election, not in a hand-wavy, idealistic kind of way, but in a very practical, solutions-focused kind of way. The, the, the three uh, ideas that I'm outlining to you today are, first of all, giving real teeth to DOC's species recovery work, funding conservation properly, and controlling pests in our natural environment. 2010 was the International Year of Biodiversity, though you could be forgiven for not knowing that. It was no doubt intended to celebrate the success of the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. But the way it turned out, both in New Zealand and indeed around the world, was as, as something of a requiem uh, for the, the thousands of species that have been lost and that we continue to lose rapidly. Lester Brown has talked about the crisis in biodiversity that the world is currently going through as the sixth great extinction. The last was some 65 million years ago when an asteroid hit the Earth, and this one, of course, has been caused by the actions of human beings. He calls it a massive evolutionary setback and a wholesale impoverishment of life on Earth. New Zealand is a biodiversity hotspot. It's the home to some of the most uh, unique and amazing life forms on the planet. Our plants and animals are utterly unique, not found anywhere, anywhere else. And that's one of the reasons why it's so critical for us to be successful in saving, saving this uh, amazing biodiversity. Unfortunately, New Zealand also has a long record of extinctions. And Cabinet last year, in fact, saw a paper that, uh, that demonstrated that New Zealand is right at the top of the list in terms of countries uh, whose species are threatened. We have a special responsibility to protect the plants and animals that we love. Department of Conservation has, <coughs> the Department of Conservation has identified some 2,788 species in New Zealand as being under threat. That includes all of our frogs and bats, 89% of our reptiles, 65% of freshwater fish, and 57% of our birds. They could disappear forever within our lifetime. There are thousands more native species that we simply don't know about because they haven't been categorised. For over a hundred years, New Zealanders have been achieve, achieving some, uh, some remarkable successes in conservation against this tide. But right now, only 200, that's only a couple of percent of those that we know are threatened, actually have species recovery plans. It's true that the, the Wildlife Act makes it an offence to intentionally kill a native animal, and we, we, we saw the, the drama acted out, I guess, a year or so ago now of, of the minister talking about the Norwegian tourists who, who had shot a kereru. Um, and there, are, there is similar protection for some of our native plants. Uh, but the major threats to our plants and our animals are introduced predators, invasive weeds, and the ongoing loss and disruption of habitat. So far, as a nation, we have failed to respond effectively to any of those threats. 
As you know, I have for the most part been a strident critic of this government's performance on conservation. It's clear from the uh, very few speeches by the Prime Minister where he mentions the natural environment that he sees it essentially as a source of resources to be exploited for monetary gain. And I guess that impression is reinforced by the Minister of Conservation's priorities reflected in the Statement of Intent uh, of the Department of Conservation, which are almost entirely about the commercialisation of our public conservation estate. That stands in stark contrast to, to most New Zealanders who love this country, who love our native plants and animals, and want to protect them for their intrinsic worth and so that our kids and our grandkids are also able to derive the same enjoyment from them that we do. Government's commercialisation of public conservation estate is no surprise and necessarily gives rise to speculation that the conservation budget has been slashed by this government, remember $54 million over four years, dollar terms reduction in baseline funding, precisely in order to force DOC to embrace the private sector. Most recently, pleading for a private sponsor to enable pest control to occur on one of our offshore conservation islands, Kapiti. The consequences of that funding cut have already been dire, with job losses already occurring, another wave in process right now, and yet another planned for next year. Uh, I was most recently uh, in, uh, down at the Waituna Lagoon in Southland, where scientists from the regional council were talking to me about the amazing science that had been going on around that wetland area uh, and, and we're saying we're not actually sure how we're going to be able to continue this science because it has been a collaboration between regional council scientists and doc scientists and the doc scientists won't be there anymore. I was at, uh, at the Wildlife Recovery Centre in Tauranga in the wake of the, of the Rena disaster uh, talking to people there and talking about some of the obstacles. One of the obstacles that they mentioned was that DOC no longer has the appropriate specialisation in seabirds. Uh, another example, the Deniston coal mine, an open cast coal mine a plan for a, a unique ecosystem in, in New Zealand. DOC was not even uh, officially at the, uh, the resource management hearings. So the commissioners were saying, how on earth can we make good decisions uh, about this when we don't have access to the expertise. So despite the protestations of the Minister and the Director General, it's absolutely clear that those cuts to funding and cuts to jobs are going to have uh, an immediate and dire effect on the, the capacity and the capability of the department to take any effective action against this tide of extinctions that we face. I'm today announcing a, a bill that will give real teeth to the protection of our most endangered plants and animals. The United States, Canada and Australia have all passed benchmark legislation in the wake of the Rio Declaration to protect and secure their native flora and fauna and the critical, critical habitat that they rely upon. New Zealand, by comparison, lacks similar legislative protection. The Wildlife Act is antiquated and offers no effective legal protection against the biggest threats. In the United States, 85% of their threatened species are now covered by a recovery plan. In New Zealand, the comparable figure, as I mentioned earlier, is just a couple of percentage points. My bill will amend the Wildlife Act by revising the purpose of the original act to extend the legal protection uh, to all native flora and fauna, including fish. Uh, the bill will give effect to the Rio Declaration and the New Zealand Biodiversity Strategy. The minister under the bill will be required to develop and implement a thorough and science-based recovery plan for each of the native species that are identified as threatened and the power to ensure 
and the Minister will have the power to ensure that the, that the plan is implemented. Secondly, in this term of Parliament, one of the few areas that we have been able to work on with this government in conservation is pest control. We have an agreement with the government to work together with them on strategy for pest control. And, and whoever leads the next government, we hope to work with them to advance that strategy. Uh, we also want to reinstate some of the pest control research programs that have been lost. But most importantly, we have secured government funding in this term to greatly accelerate the field trialling of resetting traps for possums, rats and stoats. I was very pleased last week to be with the Minister in the Trounson Kauri Park uh, to launch the Phase 2 trial of the possum trap, Phase 1 having proved successful. If these trials establish this technology to, to be effective, then we are committed to aggressively rolling out it, the, that resetting trap technology in all areas where, that, where it is suitable uh, for it. And we believe that that will greatly extend the range of ground-based control and greatly extend the pest control that can be achieved with our conservation dollar. Coming to the dollar, finally, the unprecedented threat to our unique plants and animals needs to be met with a properly resourced response. It is morally unforgivable for the government to have slashed conservation funding as this government has done in the face of the threat that we face. We must firstly reinstate that lost capability and capacity. And then we must resource the new species recovery and pest control work that I've described. In a country where our entire economy is based on a natural environment and on our reputation as the world's ark, we say it is entirely reasonable that the New Zealand government should spend 1%, just 1% of its budget, and that's still more than double the current spend, on protecting that heritage and restoring it to what to the to the lost to the lost glory that once existed. New Zealand currently spends just one third of what we spend on corrections on conservation. That cannot be acceptable. We would phase in that commitment to 1% over a six year period, meaning a spend of just under $230 million over the first three years until 2014. That's one of our uh, greatest financial commitments at this election, and it reflects the absolute and critical importance of getting conservation right. We only have one chance at this. If we don't get this right, it's lost forever. Our environment and our natural heritage are what makes this country unique and precious. We are committed to doing whatever it takes to protect, to protect these features. It's important for its own sake, of course, but also because so much of our economy, everything that we sell on the international stage, for example, is dependent on our clean, green reputation. We set out to make that reputation real. No environment, no economy. If we trash the environment, if we, if we sacrifice our conservation heritage, then we also sabotage our economy. More importantly, we rob our grandchildren of their birthright. It is another form of borrowing from future generations to pay for short-term profit today, incurring a debt that neither this government nor any government ever will be ever able to repay. Open for questions. Kath.